to Z Mysteries Book Number 7 The Goose's Gold by Ron Roy Chapter 4 Graham, how do you know Spike and Chip? Ruth Rose asked. Wash up for lunch and I'll tell you all about it, her grandmother said. The kids crowded around the kitchen sink and washed their hands. A few weeks ago, Spike and Chip came to my senior center, Ruth Rose's Graham said. She set a plate of sandwiches on the table. The kids wiped their hands and sat down. They told us all about the treasure they found, Graham continued. She poured lemonade. Now they're looking for investors. Just like Mel Fisher, Dink said. He reached for the tuna sandwich. That's right, Dink, Graham said. Josh heaped three sandwiches onto his plate. Are you gonna get rich? he asked. Ruth Rose's grandmother laughed. We'll have to wait and see, she said. Anyway, we are each thinking about investing $10,000. Graham, Ruth Rose said. Her grandmother's eyes twinkled. I know, it is a little scary. Boy, I'd do anything to go with them when they dive for treasure, Josh said. That reminds me, Graham said. She took three presents off the counter. Merry Christmas. Wow, thanks, Graham, said Ruth Rose. Yeah, thanks, said Dink and Josh. They're all the same, Graham Hathaway said. That way you won't have to share. The kids pulled off the paper. Inside, they each found a book called Finding Sunken Treasure in Florida. The cover showed a boat like the one Mel Fisher had used. Under the boat was a sunken ship. Divers were searching the wreck and bringing up treasure. I thought you'd have fun learning about shipwrecks, said Graham, since I might be investing in one. This is so neat, Josh said. Thanks a lot. Ruth Rose's grandmother stood up. You're very welcome. Now I have to get busy. Spike and Chip will be here in an hour. Can you help me set up the living room? Sure, Dink said. What do you want us to do? I'll need about ten folding chairs. They're in the hall closet. And bring out three card tables. The kids arranged the tables and chairs around the living room. Graham Hathaway set out covered plates of cookies on one of the tables. Can we stay for the meeting? Ruth Rose asked. Of course, her grandmother said. After you read those books, I expect you to ask intelligent questions. The kids took their books out of the front porch. Look, Josh said. There's a whole chapter just about Mel Fisher. Ruth Rose pointed to a map showing sunken ships. They're all off the coast of Florida, she said. If each one has treasure on it, think how much that is. Josh lay back on the porch and closed his eyes. I'm staying here when you guys go back home. I'm gonna become a treasure hunter. Dink laughed. You find treasure? You couldn't find your shorts this morning, Josh. Josh jabbed Dink with his knee. Call me Captain Josh, please. Just then, a car pulled up. Two gray-haired women climbed out and hurried toward the house. I'm going in to help Graham, Ruth Rose said. We'll help too, said Dink. He nudged Josh. Come on, Captain Josh. Before they could go inside, a yellow cab stopped out front. Spike and Chip climbed out. Spike was carrying a wooden box. They were both dressed in clean pants, 
pressed shirts and sandals. Hi, Josh said as the two men walked up the sidewalk. Spike and Chip stared at the kids. Finally, Chip waved. How are you doing? Do you guys live around here? Ruth Rose laughed. No, we're visiting my grandmother. This is her house. Spike smiled. What a small world, he said. Can I carry the box in? Josh asked. Spike shrugged. It's pretty heavy. I can help, Dink said. They ran down the sidewalk and Spike handed them the box. Josh grinned as they lugged the heavy box up the steps. My fingers feel all tingly, he said. Chapter 5 Graham Hathaway's living room was crowded with people. Spike and Chip sat at a small table with the box in front of them. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose perched on the stairs. Thank you all for coming, Graham told everyone. Then she smiled at Spike. He stood up. Thanks for inviting us, Spike said. Chip and I have been diving for a few years now. A couple weeks ago, we found a sunken ship. Chip opened the box. Spike reached in and pulled out a gold cross, about eight inches tall. The gold shone warmly in the sunny room. Someone said, oh my goodness. Spike gently laid the cross on the table. Next, he brought out a shiny hunk of silver, about the size of a big bar of soap. Then he spread a handful of gold coins on the table. There's a lot more down there, he continued. We've found chains, silver goblets, even jewelry. Graham's friends got out of their seats and crowded around Spike and Chip. May we touch it? One woman asked. Spike laughed. Can't hurt it, ma'am. It's been on the bottom of the ocean for almost 400 years. Josh was standing up so he could see. Graham Hathaway's friends were passing around the gold and silver. Um, Spike? Josh said. How did you get it so clean? Wouldn't it have barnacles and stuff all over it? Spike grinned. Good question, he said. First we soak the pieces, then we rub them with regular old vinegar. You'd be surprised how easily it cleans up. Ruth Rose's hand shot up. Can I ask a question? Spike nodded. Ask away. It took Mel Fisher 20 years to find his sunken ship, said Ruth Rose. How did you find yours so quickly? Spike smiled. I guess we were just lucky, he said. And we had good maps, Chip added. Spike turned back to the group. I hope you'll all consider investing with us, he said. Once we can buy some more equipment, we'll start bringing up some serious treasure. Ruth Rose's grandmother stood up. Why don't we have refreshments now, she said. Everyone began talking and filling small plates with cookies. Ruth Rose went into the kitchen for the lemonade. Dink and Josh stayed on the stairs near the table of goodies. Spike and Chip stepped over to the refreshment table. Dink watched Spike take a few cookies. These cookies are loaded with chocolate chips, Spike whispered to his friend. Dink was about to say something to Spike, but he stopped. He knew he had heard those words before. Dink closed his eyes and tried to remember the voice he'd overheard in the airport. Dink was positive, the man had said. Those cookies are loaded. Dink was almost sure it had been the same voice. He looked down for a tattoo, but Spike's pants covered his ankles. The sandals looked the same, but a lot of people in Florida wore brown leather sandals. 
What's the matter? Ruth Rose asked Dink. You look like you smelled something rotten. Dink stood up. Come outside, he whispered. It's important. Chapter Six. Josh and Ruth Rose followed Dink through the living room to the porch. They sat on the front steps. What's going on? Josh asked. I wasn't through with those cookies. Remember the guy I told you about at the airport yesterday? Dink asked, talking on the phone. Ruth Rose grinned. Yeah, the cook you thought was planning a robbery. Dink turned around and looked through the screen door. I think it was Spike. Josh and Ruth Rose just stared at Dink. Finally, Josh said, "What are you talking about, Dinkus?" I recognized his voice. Dink said, "The guy at the airport said the same thing that some cookies were loaded." Josh shook his head. So, don't you see? Dink said, "Maybe he meant Graham Hathaway's friends are loaded, loaded with money." Suddenly, the door opened and Graham's friends began coming out. They all seemed excited about investing with Spike and Chip. Then Spike and Chip came out carrying the box of gold. Graham Hathaway followed them onto the porch. "Thanks for calling us a cab, Mrs. Hathaway," Spike said. "Do you really think your friends will help us out?" Graham Hathaway smiled. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I'm going to talk to my banker on Monday morning. A yellow cab pulled up, and Spike and Chip climbed in with the box. They waved out the window as the cab sped away. Wasn't that fun? Ruth Rose's grandmother said. She stepped back into the house. There are plenty of goodies left if anyone is hungry. She called through the screen door. Thanks, Graham. Ruth Rose said. She's pretty excited. She added after her grandmother had gone inside. I would be too if I was gonna get rich. Josh said. Dink stood up. Well, I don't think she's gonna get rich. He said. I think she's gonna get robbed. Robbed. Ruth Rose yelled. Yeah, Dink said. Spike and Chip could just take off with your grandmother's money, but what about all that gold they just showed us? Josh asked. Dink shook his head. I don't know about that, but I do know what I heard. You know what you thought you heard, Josh said. Besides, you don't know it was Spike. You never saw the guy on the phone, but I did see his feet. Dink said. He told Josh and Ruth Rose about the tattoo he'd seen on the man's ankle. It's a good thing I'm such an observant young man, Josh said. I know how we can settle this whole thing. How? Ruth Rose asked. By finding out if it really was Spike that Dink heard on the phone. Dink looked at him. And how do we do that, O、oh、observant one? Josh grinned. Easy. We get Spike to show us his tattoo.